When sports are life, and life is sports. I'm James Simmons, and I got five on it. Hey everybody, this is your boy James and welcome back to I Got Five On It. Uh, this is a Dad's Thing production. Uh, got a quick take from you for you today, excuse me. Um, and this one, um, big shout out to uh, my bro, my big bro, uh, Rashard Lawson uh, Sr. You know, he asked me, uh, what was my thoughts on the hiring of Ed Reed, um, new head football coach at Bethune-Cookman, um, historically black college university uh, in Florida. Um, and this take is for him. You know, just to let you know, if you have a sports take um, that you'd love uh, to hear my opinion uh, about, please, you know, drop me an email, DM me on my my IG, hit me up on this uh, YouTube channel, and just say, hey, what are your thoughts about X, Y, or Z? Um, I'll take a look at it. And just keep in mind, I like to tie in real life situations um, into my take. So I want to go a little bit deeper than just the sports stuff. Um, uh, on the surface, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Um, so, uh, again, shout out to Rashad Lawson Sr. Check him out, um, YouTube, Instagram at Real to Real TV. That's R E E L 2 R E E L TV. Um, so, uh, Ed Reed, okay. Um, first and foremost, I gotta say this um, it is nothing new for former NFL. Um, players um, to uh, become head coaches at historically black uh, colleges and universities. Um, when I was growing up, um, uh, the person that I, I knew uh, who played in the league, who went back um, to an HBCU to become a head football coach was Doug Williams. Doug Williams, uh, Super Bowl winning, Super Bowl MVP um, quarterback um, from the Washington Commanders, formerly known as uh, the Washington football team, um, which they changed that name um, and when he was playing. It, they were called the Washington Redskins. Um, so that right there is a take in and of itself uh, that we can dive into real deeply. Um, but Doug Williams went back to his alma mater, which was Grambling State, became the head football coach there, um, and had much success, um, won several SWAC championships, um, had winning records um, towards the end, and he had two stints. Um, on his second stint, um, towards his last year or so, um, things fell on hard time, wasn't winning as many games, and he got fired. Okay, um, So that was the end of his coaching um, at Grambling State. Um, I was doing some research and uh, saw some things, and again, it was it was noted that this isn't a new thing with having former NFL players come and coach um, on this level at these universities. Um, and when I was looking into it, I was wondering why. Uh, why hasn't it been in the in the news? Why hasn't it been in the media? Why isn't this something that a lot of us know about? And first and foremost, I got to say this: this is nothing new to folks that grow up or grew up look, watching SWAC football, live in Southern areas and have roots and that are connected to HBCUs, athletics, academics, the life, the culture, okay? Nothing new to them. It's only becoming new to folks that live in Northern states, Western states, um, don't go to historically black colleges and universities. That's who it's new to. OK, so let's get that straight from the jump. This isn't something that just started happening. OK, the second point that I want to make as to why really not connected to a lot of us. A, having black football coaches has not been something that many people cared about. Just want to put that out there. We're still fighting to have more black coaches in Power 5 schools. We're still having to fight to have black, college, uh, black coaches at the highest level, which is the NFL. Okay, So the black coach has not been something that has been desired at those levels. So folks really don't care about black coaches at the level of HBCUs. Okay, Point, so point three, why hasn't it been known? A lot of the coaches that have come from the NFL ranks, that have gone to HBCUs, I'm going to say, have gone back to HBCUs. They are alumni of these colleges. They go back to the schools that they played for when they were in college. Gramblins, Jackson State's, 
Um, I'm trying to think, but then Cookman's, there's, there's lots of coaches who have gone back to coach at their alma mater because they are familiar with the people at these universities. These universities adore, admire them, and are willing to give them an opportunity to come back and to coach at, as a head coach at their football schools. So those are a couple of reasons why I think that it's not been known, uh, why folks haven't cared much about it, and why it's just starting to get out there a little bit more. And that's where you have a guy like uh, Coach Prime, right? Coach Prime went to Florida State, went on to play in the NFL, bigger than life figure. It's not going to be another Coach Prime to come in and to, to do the same exact thing that he did. They do not have his personality. So when I look at it, Ed Reed, uh, Coach Reed is going to have to come in and be who he is. And I really like who Coach Reed is. He's a dude who um, played at the, 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 the University of Miami, uh, the U. He played at Miami. Uh, he, is, he was All-American, went on to play in the NFL, uh, Hall of Famer, defensive back, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, safety to play the game. Uh, he's got this quiet kind of swagger to him, which I think is going to be something that he can use to his advantage. And he's got to play to his strengths. He's from Louisiana, went to school in Miami. He has some coaching um, experience. He coached uh, for the Bill Buffalo Bills as a assistant defensive backs coach. He went on to uh, be the um, he had a role in kind of administration, but kind of the development, uh, chief of staff, excuse me, chief of staff at Miami, um, where he did that for the last three seasons, staying closely connected to coaches, support staffs, staying close to the kids. OK, so he has ties to this state. I think he's going to be able to use that to his um, uh, advantage when it comes to recruiting. I think the way he uh possibly has to structure and get an idea of the type of players that he wants to bring in, how long these players are going to stay with him. All right, we got this transfer portal thing that goes on. Kid gets a little bit of experience, blows up. Now he's got all these other schools that may be looking at him to come to their university after a couple of years of showing what he can do. Um, and then again, that connection to Miami, uh, he can use that as a selling point. I won't say a selling point, but kids, kid, kids are smart. If Coach Reed is connected to the U, I go to his school down here, get a little bit of experience, I can probably parlay that into an opportunity at the U or some other bigger school. That's just the nature and the business of how college football works. So let's keep it real. So do I think it's a good hire? I think it's a great hire by Bethune Cookman. I think Coach Reed is going to do um, a great job in the areas he's going to need to as far as recruiting. Um, I think there are some things that he's definitely going to have to learn. It's always a learning curve when you become a position coach and you move um, into a head coaching position. Um, I think he surrounded himself uh, or has been around a lot of people where he was able to soak a lot of that up. It's a different thing when you're the man calling the shots. So it, a lot to be remained to be seen and we will see it. So I just want to wish Coach Reed all the best. Be you, do you, because that has what's gotten you to the point that you are at right you go. now. Uh, my take on the hire of Coach Reed again, Rashard Lawson Sr. Appreciate you giving me this opportunity uh, to bring this in front of me, to have a couple of moments I'll to talk back. about it with some more of I Got Five on it. Please hit that like button. S hit the sma smash that subscribe button as well. Um, the support is greatly appreciated. Helps the channel grow. And to get this information, get these takes out there to the masses. Hey, have a good one. Talk to you soon. Be good.